Hello people and welcome to Crypto Exposed. Real world assets may overtake blockchain sector due to trade by interest. Nice. Okay guys, got this article here that was posted by Hadira on their X profile and I thought I'd address this because um you know RWA tokenization is something I've been trying to, you know, scream at you guys for the longest time. So we've just got here more and more proof of what this is going to do for Hedera and for the crypto space. So we've got this article here and they're basically talking about the pros and cons of real world assets being tokenized. And um, overall, the pros are well outweighing the cons. So there's definitely way more positives to this than negatives. But let's get into it. So the first thing that they're saying is that um, they're seeing a 8 billion rise in TVL for real world assets. And that's just in this year alone. And we're only halfway through the year. So what that's basically saying is this stuff is really picking up steam. It's something that's really being looked at in a big way and it's really gaining traction. Uh, it makes sense. Um, tokenization, as I've said before, I think it's going to be one of the biggest value drivers for um, Hedera. I think this could be something that's really massive. I also think um, it's going to be just big for the crypto sector as a whole. Um, I think it's something that's huge. I think it's something where, as I've said previously, um, tokenization like everything of value will be tokenized eventually so this is something that is massive that we're seeing different sectors looking into this and wanting to potentially adopt the technology to start utilizing uh tokenization right so um straight away that just shows you how much this is growing now it's starting to get that exponential rise like that snowball effect where it's just gaining traction bigger and bigger and bigger quicker and quicker so that's definitely uh great stuff to see um, there was also talking about like, you know, different companies who are now, you know, tokenizing, like there was a Swiss firm that they were talking about who are also doing tokenizing assets and stuff like that. And they're like managing, like I think it was billions in their portfolio. So you can see, you know, this starting to take place and it, it's well underway. It's well underway because I've been covering numerous companies that are doing tokenization on Hedera. So this is something that's already going on we're just seeing it starting to really you know pick up steam as i was saying earlier now um one of the things that they were saying in regards to this in regards to like the, the negatives is just it's hard at the moment due to regulatory uncertainty that makes sense of course it does you know with regulatory uncertainty it's going to be hard for some companies to want to get involved because they don't want to do anything that's going to get them any type of legal scrutiny they're going to want to wait till they know it's safe and knowing that they're doing everything within a regulated environment so that, that completely makes sense and again this is why you know it, it's just so frustrating what the SEC are doing I don't want to keep going into this because I've, I've you know harped on this topic numerous times now but if SEC would just actually do their job and you know really start trying to help the space and the people uh, with adopting this technology and actually getting it regulated that would open the door for many other countries to follow suit. So, you know, the fact that they're dragging their heels and they're being the way they are. And the thing is with, with the SEC, it's not that they're just dragging their heels. They're actually trying to be destructive, right? It's not even like they're just procrastinating. It's like, no, they're actually trying to hinder the progress of, you know, crypto adoption. So that's even worse. But yeah, I completely understand why that would be an issue, like a hindrance. But unfortunately, it's just something that we've got to deal with, you know, for the foreseeable future. But eventually, this will get worked out. This is something that they can't keep putting off for too long. Eventually, you know, it's going to happen. Regulations are going to come because crypto is here to stay. I think mean, that's quite evident at this point. Um, the other thing that I was talking about is basically interoperability. The problem is, is that tokenization is going on basically across numerous different chains, right? So it's fragmented. And that's where it can be a problem in terms of the interoperability. Uh, again, this is completely understandable. I mean, if people are tokenizing on one network, they still want to make it so it's interoperable with other networks, right? Because when we do grow in the future, it will be a cross-chain future. Like there won't just be one network that people tokenize on and people develop on. So you want to make it as uh, interoperable as possible. Um, and I did see that they said that Chainlink are, are developing something to try and address this issue, which is that's that's definitely good. So that's something that will obviously help. And I think as time does go by, you will see more unity. Like we've already seen some unity with the DREC Alliance. That's obviously brought some um, networks together and some companies. I think this will just continue to happen because, again, if we want the industry to move forward as a whole, 
we do need unity. So I think in the end, that will be something that people will want to do because it's going to benefit them as well, right? If you just stick into one network and kind of keeping yourself closed off, it's not making you available to other opportunities. So it's, it's really like shutting yourself off from other potential, you know, other potential clients, customers, etc. So I don't think that's something that people would want to do. They would want to give themselves as much um, exposure as possible. So I do think that's something that will, you know, also ultimately be addressed. But yeah, they're talking about how TradeFi are really interested in uh, real world assets right now. Which makes sense because this is basically the evolution of traditional finance, right? This is taking, you know, traditional finance digital. So does this make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I do think they are going to, you know, take over with uh, real world assets because they're going to want to tokenize things. It's just going to make things a lot better, a lot easier, a lot more transparent. You know, it's just going to be a much better version of what you currently have in terms of traditional finance. So I found this interesting, this article. Um, feel free to check it out. It is on Hedera's website. But overall, what you're basically hearing here is something that Hedera is well underway with at the moment in terms of tokenization. You know, they've got Archax developing, um, the Diamond Standard are developing, uh, Red Swan are developing. They're all, they're all tokenizing on the Hedera hash graph. So there's plenty of examples of this already going on, and I'm sure there's going to be more coming in the future. So seeing this is giving you an idea of how it's going to be in the future and Hedera already have a head start in this. So definitely an interesting read. So check it out if you wish to. But what do you guys think? Real world assets to overtake the blockchain slash hashcraft sector. Let me know your thoughts guys. I'd be interested to hear. Thank you very much for watching this. If you did like it, please remember to drop a comment, like and subscribe. But until next time, take care.